what would you say is the prime factor in why Tibbs was fired from the from the Timberwolves? Yeah, I mean, the main factor was is that his main guy, the guy that he really kind of staked the future of the franchise to, Jimmy Butler, really blew things up from I- inside the house. And so I, any executive that goes through that kind of a situation with a star player is going to have a hard time surviving it. And I think that no one ever doubted Tibbs the coach, Tibbs the preparer, Tibbs the worker. Like he, all of that was as advertised in Minnesota. Um, You know, he is his commitment to the job and all of those things unquestioned. There's no, you know, his acumen, his knowledge of the game, his knowledge of the league. There's, there's no one, you know, that has more of it than, than Tibbs does. I think that the problem that he ran into was that uh, the, the dual roles of being the president of basketball operations and a head coach just wasn't going to work for him. Uh, it, you know, you when you have a guy like Tibbs who is a grinder and is, you know, kind of this really, uh, you know, this tight personality that um, that is so intense and is so based on the work, uh, I think you need to have someone else to sort of balance that out. Um, and, and you, you need a GM or you need an assistant coach or you need some other element to kind of lighten the air a little bit to be kind of approachable with players and to be engaging one-on-one with them and things like that. That's just not Tibbs deal. And so, um, as his role as president of basketball operations, uh, and, and kind of really lording over the franchise, the entire franchise kind of took on his level of intensity and you know I don't I don't know if you want to call it paranoia whatever you want to call it in terms of just the way that he was a a hermit and he really kind of was an isolationist type of a of of a personality that way and so when it came time for uh, him to need some allies within the organization to go to bat for him when the butler thing was blowing up in his face he had not cultivated those relationships Mm -hmm. And he didn't have a lot of those people in his corner. And so, um, you know, I think in in New York, it's a lot different with Leon Rose and World Wide West and, and, and Kenny Payne and a lot of guys, they have really surrounded Tibbs with the right people to kind of balance everything out. I mean, you know, Tibbs is a great coach with a great personality for coaching and winning that day. Mm-hmm. You also need the people around to really cultivate a culture and, and, and keep everyone from just feeling the weight of competition every single night. And so uh, they, they just didn't have that in Minnesota. If he, if Tibbs would have just been the coach and actually had a real GM that, that could help with a lot of those things um, and have be a little more forward thinking, I, I think it could have worked out differently, but that just wasn't the case here. Yeah, certainly. Because I mean, he, he gets there first year was a struggle. Second year, they make the playoffs first time in ages. And then only does half a season his third year before he's ousted. And so, as you said, it seems like obviously the Butler thing was what was out there in, in public view. And that, you know, certainly could have led to his demise. But when you, when you mentioned Leon bros, I saw the same thing in terms of how he kind of crafted the staff in terms of bringing in a Kenny Payne who was known to, yes, be a a player development coach, but a coach that had great relationship with that Kentucky, um, with those Kentucky prospects. You talk about Mike Woodson, who, you know, I brought in players from Jamal Crawford, Raymond Felton, Kenny Martin. Everybody goes to bat for Mike Woodson as being a player coach, but a guy that, you know, holds players accountable and will still get the most out of you. A World Wide West who also has those, those player relationships. And so it seems like Leon Rose comes coming from the player agent side of things kind of, you know, knows what the players want, knows what they need to succeed. And it seemed like he shaped the staff that way and bringing on those three guys. Yeah, it was really smart. And I think I wrote a piece for the athletic right before, right after Tibbs was hired about just how key Leon Rose was going to be in this, in this uh, situation, because I'll tell you like one of the things that I did not agree with, with the Timberwolves in the way that things went with, Tom Thibodeau was they hired Tom to come in. They empowered him 
you know, greatly. And then, you know, they kind of saw like how volatile he is on the sideline and kind of how isolationist he is behind the scenes. He doesn't want to do a lot of the marketing and branding things. He doesn't want to meet with season ticket holders. He doesn't want to, you know, kiss babies and, and, you know, shake hands like a politician. That's just not his gig. And I think that the Wolves, for whatever reason, were a little bit surprised by that or put off by that. And it's like, look, it's not hard to find out who Tom Thibodeau is. And if you are surprised by that part of the thing, by his personality that way, then you didn't do a good job of researching who you were hiring. Yeah. And so Leon Rose really knows Tibbs. I mean, he was his agent for a long time. He um, really kind of went through the battles in Minnesota with Tibbs because he also represents Carl Anthony Towns. And so he knew all, all of the skeletons in the closet for this Timberwolves situation. And so when he hired Tibbs, he very much understood where are the blind spots? How do I make sure that we craft a, a, an ecosystem where we can really maximize Tibbs' great gifts with game plan, with preparation, with with understanding of uh, of the league, with with all of those things, with play, with uh, skill development and maximization of his players, like Tibbs can do all of that stuff. But you need to have those other things around him. You need to have the 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 relationship building. You need to have kind of the po the pol the politicians on you know in the organization as well to really kind of help smooth over the eventual rough edges that are always going to come. And so they just did not have that here. Tibbs' staff here coaching was just all Tibbs guys, mm -hmm. like except for Ryan Saunders, who was kind of a prerequisite, right. but um, they were all Tibbs guys. The front office was all Tibbs guys. And there just wasn't anybody who was going to say, hey, Tom, you know, we got a problem here with Jimmy Butler. We got to address this some way. We got a problem here. We got we to gotta reach out and and, and kind of, be a little bit different with Ricky Rubio or Carl Anthony Towns than we are with Jimmy Butler or Taj Gibson or Derek Rose. Like we got to figure out ways to approach that. And they just never did. And so when they went about it that way, then the locker room itself just was not able to come together and was not able to stay together because any little kind of brush fires that started, no one was there to put them out before they became really big infernos. I think in New York, with everyone around him there, you have people that will see problems around the corner before they become real problems. And that's just not Tibbs' strength. All Tibbs wants to do is clock in every day, put your work in, and then go home. And um, he's not there for for the touchy feely. How you know you know how's a player feeling today? Oh, does this player doesn't get along with this player? Uh, boy, let's get in a room and hash it out. He's not doing that. He just, yeah. he depends on people to be professional and just handle it. And that's not the way it works in the NBA these days. So um, in Minnesota, all of those fires that were just little sparks turned into raging infernos yeah. because there was no one there to really address it. And I think Leon and World Wide West and Kenny and Woodson and all of, and, and so many other people there, they're just more prepared for that side of it. So yeah. Tom can just be the coach and that's what he's best at. And he's still able to have his guys in Andy Greer and, and Daisuke as well. But sure. it, as you said, it seems like the, the major change there was Leon able to bring in guys that may cover Tibbs' weaknesses in certain areas, relationships being one of them. And then I also look at, how he changed potentially as a person because I, I heard Julius Randle's a podcast interview with JJ Reddick and and he had some glowing things to say about Tibbs. You know, really uh, went to bat for the Tibbs hire. He thought that Tibbs was the perfect coach to push him and hold him accountable. <laughs>